Welcome to the Mirror of the World. Thank you for joining in today. I pray that the Lord will visit you and perform His word in the name of Jesus. My name is Buki Adioshun, and I'm your regular host on this program called The Mirror of the World. The Mirror of the World is a program where we read a chapter of the Bible, we pray for those who are sick. And we give somebody the opportunity to accept Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. The purpose of this program is to encourage us to read a chapter of the Bible. And we trust God that as we read a chapter of the Bible, because uh, the Bible is a progressive revelation and it is not um it's not a storybook at all. You know, um when you read the word of God, you are meant to have an experience of what you read. In the word of god we're told that the bible is like a mirror and when we look into it we see the glory of the lord we see the image that god wants us to become and we are transformed into that image by the power of the holy spirit say for example we read in the word of the lord where god says i am the lord god that heals you uh, that's a continuous tense that means that you know you will enjoy long life you will enjoy good health you enjoy divine health. So as you talk about that word, the Holy Spirit will transform you into what you are saying. If you keep believing, you keep, you keep saying, I'm not going to come down with illness, even when you feel sick, what you say will come to pass. In our last video, uh, we read Habakkuk chapter 2, and um, we said something which I want to quickly uh, mentioned to you, we said that um, it's important for us to write things down. It's important to write your vision down and then run with it. So um, we are now in the month of August 2018. What's your vision for 2018? Have you dropped your vision along the line or you've still got them written down somewhere or you've already accomplished what you set out to do? You know, if you don't have a vision for your life, uh, people will ask you to do anything and you won't even know the reason why you are doing what you are doing. So it's important for you to be clear in terms of where you are going so that if someone is asking you to go on another journey, you can simply tell them, I'm sorry, but that will not lead me to where I'm going. I have a personal vision, a personal goal for my life. We also say that the just shall live by faith. Uh, we said that the word that God gives you, you need to hold on to it because it will surely come to pass. And then we said the just shall live by faith. And in doing this, we said we need to hear what God says, you know, to test whether you are living by faith. Um, you can do a simple test. Uh, and the test is this. You need to hear what God says. So what is it that God has said to you? You need to believe what God says. You need to act on what God says. And then you need to speak it. You need to say it. You need to keep talking about it. So if I ask you right now, uh, the word that should be in your heart should be the word of the Lord that you receive. And finally, you receive the manifestation of what God said to you. So, and then you acknowledge him. So when you, when you see the manifestation of the word of God in your life, you are able to testify and tell people, this is the word that the Lord gave me that has come to pass. So uh, you will not take any glory. You won't say it's because you are uh, brilliant or you won't say because you are strong. You just know that it's God, you know, that helped you and bring it to pass in your life. So today, by the grace of God, we're going to be reading the last chapter in the book of Habakkuk. And I want you to join me as we go into the word of the Lord. So can you please get your Bible and let's read the word of the Lord together. Habakkuk chapter 3. I'm going to be reading from the easy to read version of the Bible. Whatever version you have, whether King James, Good News. Let's just read the word of the Lord together. And I want you to do me a favor, please. Whatever minister to you from the word we're going to read today, I want you to post it as a comment at the bottom of this video. The prayer of Habakkuk the prophet, Lord, I have heard the news about you. I am amazed, Lord, at the powerful things you did in the past. 
Now I pray that you will do great things in our time. Please make these things happen in our own days. But in your anger, remember to show mercy to us. God is coming from Tema. The Holy One is coming from Mount Paran. His glory covers the heaven and his praise fills the earth. Rays of light shine from his hand. A bright shining light. There is such power hiding in that land. The sickness went before him and the destroyer followed behind him. He stood and judged the earth. He looked at the people of all the nations and they shook with fear. For many years the mountains stood strong, but those mountains fell to pieces. Those old, old hills fell down. God has always been able to do that. I saw that the city of Kushan were in trouble and that the houses of Midian trembled with fear. Lord, were you angry at the rivers? Were you angry at the streams? Were you angry at the sea? Were you angry when you rode your horses and chariots to victory? Even then you show your rainbow. It was proof of your agreement with the families of the earth. And the dry land split the rivers. The mountains saw you and shook. The water flew off the land. The water from the sea made a loud noise. As it lost its power over the land, the sun and the moon lost their brightness. They stopped shining when they saw your bright flashes of lightning. That lightning was like spears and arrows shooting through, through the air. In anger, you walked on the earth and punished the nations. You came to save your people and to lead your chosen king to victory. You killed the leader in every family, from the least important person to the most important in the land. You used Moses' walking stick to stop the enemy soldiers. Those soldiers came like a powerful storm to fight against us. They thought they could defeat us easily as robbing the poor in secret. But you march your horses through the deep water, stirring up the mud. My whole body shook when I heard the story. My lips trembled. I felt weak deep down in my bones and stood there shaking. But I will wait patiently for the destruction to come to those who attack us. Figs might not grow on the fig trees. And grapes might not, throw, might not grow on the vine. Olives might not grow on the olive trees and food might not grow in the field. There might not be any sheep in the pens or cattle in the bounds, but I will still be glad in the Lord and rejoice in God my Savior. The Lord God gives me my strength. He helps me run fast like a deer. He leads me safely on the mountains. Praise the Lord. Um, I pray that today the Lord will visit us in a great way. Um, the first thing I want to say is that, you know, uh, we just need to come to that point in our life where we cry unto the Lord and say, Lord, remember me. And I pray that the Lord will remember you for good in Jesus' name. Remember me, O Lord, and do for me what you did for the people of old. Let me experience what I have read in your word. You know, like I said, that the Bible is not a storybook. Everything that is written in the Word of God, we are meant to experience them. Psalm 106 verse 4 says, Remember me, O Lord, with the favor that thou bearest unto thy people. Oh, visit me with your salvation. Let visit me with your salvation. Now, I want to read that Psalm, Psalm 106 verse 4. I want to read it in another translation of the Bible. He reads, Lord, remember me when you show kindness to your people. Remember to save me too. Let me share in the good things that you do for your chosen people. That's our prayer. Lord, let me share in the good things. You know, there are good things that God has reserved for his own people, the people that he has chosen. So we look up to God and ask him, to help us to enjoy that. You know, God sent Jesus Christ for a particular reason. When we read Luke chapter 1, verses 70 to 75, 
were told there that God sent Jesus Christ to deliver us from the hands of the enemy and from those who hate us so that we may serve him without fear in holiness and righteousness before him all the days of our life. And I believe that's why Habakkuk began to say that prayer. And he said, God, I've heard what our ancestors say about you. And I'm stopped in my tracks, down on my knees. So he went on his knees and said, Lord, I heard what you did to, the, to Pharaoh. I heard about how you parted the Red Sea. I, how, I heard about how your people walked through, passed through River Jordan on a dry ground. You know, all those um, things that I'm talking about, I don't think there's anybody with a problem in this world that is greater than any of those problems. But yet, the Lord did great things in the life of these people. I mean, do we want to talk about the wall of Jericho? So Habakkuk is saying here, say, Lord, I have read about those things. I've heard about all those things that you did. Say, do among us what you did among them. You know, um, it's a shame that, you know, in the body of Christ, we think we, we work for what we get from God. And, and don't get me wrong. Uh, I'm not saying that God is not a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Of course, the word of the Lord says that God is a rewarder of them. Hebrews chapter 6, uh, sorry, Hebrews chapter 11, of them that diligently seek him. But we need to come to a point. We need to get to that place in our life. And that's what I am doing today, where we just ask God to do what he did in the past in our life. And not just to do things for us based on what we have done for him. You know, we say things like, you know, uh, when praises go up, blessings come down. You know, in the case of the children of Israel, when it was time for God to visit them, by his hand, he raised up Moses. He didn't visit them because they, they, they gave uh, a sacrificial offering. He didn't, he didn't visit them because um, they, we, we saw an account of how they prayed and they fasted, but he visited them because he, he said, he said, I have remembered, they said their agony, their pain. I'm praying to God today that, you know, your agony, your pain, whatever it is that you are going through that is really heavy on your heart, that God will remember the covenant he made with our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary, and he will visit you. He will remember the covenant that he made with Abraham, and he will visit you. You know, the greatest things, have you seen some people and um, you meet with them and they tell you something and look, um, I'm not giving you what I'm giving you because you deserve it, but I'm doing it for you uh, because this is what your parents did for me on the account of somebody else, what somebody did. You know, that's why I'm doing that. So, and that's what I'm encouraging us to do today. Ask God to visit you. Ask God to do for you. Let him do in your life what he did for them. You know, when God visited Sodom and Gomorrah, God delivered Lot because of Abraham. When God visited Jacob, when God visited Isaac in Genesis chapter 26, you see, <laughs> Um, praise the Lord. Many of us, when we read that account, we say, and Isaac sow in the land, and people who want to take your money. I'm talking about, you know, the hireling. They are not really shepherds. They are not pastors. All they are after is your money. And they use all sorts of scriptures to extort money from people. When you read verse 1 of that particular scripture, Genesis chapter 26, God told Isaac, he said, don't go to Egypt. Stay in this land, and I will bless you because of your father Abraham. So the blessing of God came on Isaac because of Abraham. God did the same thing for Jacob. When he, he, he ran away from his brother, uh, God met with him and God told him, he said, I will be with you and we bring you back to this land. So all we are asking God for is say, Lord, today, do in my life, do among us what you did among them. I, I love Gideon. The angel of the Lord appeared to him and said, O oh, mighty man of value. He said, 
How dare you call me, O mighty man of value? He said, Where be all the miracles? The Lord did great miracles in the Acts of Apostles. Oh my God. We are asking God that the same miracles, the same thing that He did in the Acts of Apostles, or uh, let me put it, the Acts of the Disciples, because it's really just, it's really just not the Acts of Apostles. Lord, did this, do the same thing in our life. Walk among us as you walk among them. Let that be your prayer point as from today. So don't just say, Lord, uh, because I've given unto you, give back to me, Lord, because I pray. No, say, Lord, all I'm asking you to do is give me what I do not deserve. Because I have seen the way you treated the people of the old. You didn't give them the land because they deserve it. You gave them the land because you made a promise to our father Abraham. And you said that I am connected to Abraham. Since I belong to Jesus. So Lord, I'm asking you that what you did in their life, I want you to also do for me in Jesus' name. So we need to humbly ask God, please demonstrate your goodness, your holiness, your beauty, your mercy, your favor, your kindness in my life. Let me share in the good things that you do for your chosen people. I pray that the Lord will remember you and make it possible for you to be fruitful, for you to have your own child or children, whichever one you want. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord will visit you the same way the Lord remember Sarah, and the Lord visited her as he has promised. I pray today in the name of Jesus, whatever time you are watching this video, exactly a year to the time that you watch this video, the Lord will visit you with a child. In exactly one year, you will hand you, you will carry your own child in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord will remember you like he did for the children of Israel and he will bring you out of bondage. You know, it looks like you can't go out, you cannot move anywhere. It's like you are in a cage. I declare that the Lord will remember you today and the Lord has saved Daniel from the lion's den, the same God will do the same thing in your life and will bring you out in the name of Jesus. May the Lord remember you, remember your, your low estate, your low condition, and raise you up in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray that the Lord will visit you. He will remember you. You know, he will perform his goodness. It will perform his kindness. It will perform his favor in your life. Lord, I pray today. I ask you, Lord, that you will show off among us like you did. Lord, we read the account of by your right hand. They did not get the land that you promised them by their sword. But by your right hand, Lord, I ask you that you will do for us. Every single person watching this video before the end of this year. Lord, I pray that you will do for them something that they will not be able to say, I got that by my own power. But they will say, this is the hand of the Lord. This is the Lord's doing. And it is marvelous in our side in Jesus' name. Now, while we are waiting for God to show off in our life, we need to start praising him. This is what Habakkuk, this is what he did. He started off in, in verse 1 by saying, Lord, I have heard your report. I've heard about what you did for the people of the whole. Do great work among us. And then he went up and began to eulogize God, began to talk about God, how fearful God is. And then he came to the point, he said, I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Though the fig tree does not blossom and there is no fruit on the vine, do the product of the olive fails and the fields yield no food. Even with all this declaration, all this prayer, it might look like you're not feeling anything. Uh, the things of God are not by feeling. You say, even though the flock is cut off from the fold and there are no cattle in the store, no money in your bank account, you don't even have a job, you don't even know where the next meal is going to come from. It looks like you don't even know where you're going to get the money for to, to put in your application. This is the word of the Lord. This is what Habakkuk did. This is what I want you to say. Yet, I will rejoice in the Lord. 
I will exult in the God of my salvation. I will rejoice in the Lord. I will rejoice in the God of my salvation. Say, the Lord God is my strength. He is my personal bravery and my invincible army. He makes my feet like hinds feet and will make me to walk, not to stand still in terror, but to walk, to make spiritual progress upon my high places of trouble, suffering, and responsibility in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you to begin to rejoice. I want you to begin to thank God. I want you to begin to declare that, say, Lord, you are my strength. I rejoice in you. Lord, you are my strength. I thank you because you will make me to walk and not stand still in terror and not stand still in fear. I will pass through. I am going through. The Lord my God will strengthen me in the name of Jesus. He will make me to make spiritual progress. I speak to your spirit today. Make progress. Receive strength. Receive courage to make progress in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, you that are downcast. Oh, you that are discouraged. I speak words of life into you today. I speak hope into your situation. Receive hope in the name of Jesus. Be encouraged. Receive hope that your end has not come. In the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will lift you up. The Lord will reward you. The Lord will encourage you in the mighty name of Jesus. What has been taken away from you, you will recover it. You will get it back in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for your word. I want to pray for those who are sick. It's a short word. The Lord is my strength. I will make it. I want you to say that to yourself over and over again. The Lord is my strength. I will not be disappointed. I will make it. The Lord God is my strength. I will not be disappointed. I will make it. This word will come to pass in my life. Isaac did not fail to make it. Jacob did not fail to make it. Oh, even Joseph, he was put in the prison. Oh, they lied on him. What is it that they didn't do for him? But he did not fail to make it. So I will not fail to make it. I will make it in the name of Jesus. I declare that you will make it. You will have victory. It's yours in Jesus' name. I command doors to open for you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We bless your name. Lord, I pray for every single person watching this video right now that is sick. Lord, we, receive, we release your grace. We release your blessing. We release, Lord, your anointing in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I ask you to do what you know how to do best. Raise them up from their sick bed in the mighty name of Jesus. So, Prahast and Lekeria. Lord, I command somebody that has problem with, with the breast. I don't know whether it's breast, can, breast cancer. There's something like a, a pulse or whatever. And you, I, I declare that you are made whole right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I give you praise. Uh, there, there's somebody you are watching is that something is eating you up. So you, you can't explain it, but something is eating you up. Uh, you are emancipating something is eating you up. You are healed of that illness right now in the mighty name of Jesus. The demon that is responsible for that sickness, I command you to go in Jesus' name. For the word of the Lord says that I will cast out them. So I cast you out from that body. That temple belongs to the Holy Ghost. You cannot share it. You can't share it with God. So I command you to go from that body right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for all these miracles. I thank you for all these miracles. I want you to begin to thank God. I want you to begin to rejoice. The Lord God is my strength, my personal bravery, my invincible army. The Lord will fight for you. The Lord is fighting for you and you will hold your peace. I speak the word of the Lord to you today. The same way the wall of Jericho came down. 
and the children of Israel could not explain to you tomorrow how it happened. I declare that every wall of opposition that stands against you, they will disappear with no explanation in Jesus' name. You will get there tomorrow. You will find out that there is nothing, no accusation. Every allegation against you has been dropped completely in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. I thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name. I hope that you have been encouraged. I hope you have received hope to the hopeless situation. We were told about Abraham that Abraham believed in hope against hope. That's what I want you to do. Believe in hope. All I just need you to do for me is just a little hope against all hope. For adventure, things might change. Oh, I will live again. Maybe I will walk this, with this my leg again. The leg that ha they have written up, they are condemned that you cannot walk with it. Just lead to hope. I will walk with this leg again. With this leg again. And try and make a move. That's all I need you to do. Now, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and as your Savior, I want you to accept him. I want you to become born again. Jesus Christ came so that we may have eternal life. And eternal life is knowing God. You know him as your father. And you know him as your God. So if you want to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior, I want you to please say these prayers after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I confess that I am a sinner. I repent of my sins today. I believe you die for me so I can have eternal life. I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you very much for saying that prayer. You're going to see our email address at the bottom of the screen. I want you to write us, send us a text message, you know, um, call us. We want to send some materials to you that is going to help you grow spiritually and it's free. Whatever time you're watching this video, please do that. I want you to find a local church around you that you can be part of. Just go and join them so that they can support you in your new fan faith and uh, i want you to also get in touch with us if you want to be part of our fellowship we do series of online um, meetings on friday we every friday we have online online interactive bible study that you can be part of tuesday we have online prayer meetings so you can phone in you can join on the internet 9 to 9 30. you're going to see our flyer on the screen shortly um, and then we have the mirror of the world, which is this program. We do it every day, apart from those days when we have those meetings. Uh, that starts from 10 to 10.30 every evening UK time. Uh, you can be part of any of these meetings. And if you want to be part of our fellowship, we meet on Sundays at Luton. Uh, every, Sunday, uh, every Sunday service is a communion service. So we want to encourage you to join us and be part of that. Uh, meeting the god himself the god who makes everything holy and whole make you holy and whole put you together spirit soul and body and keep you fit for the coming of our master jesus christ the one who called you is completely dependable if he said it he will do it thank you so much for watching this video i want to encourage you to go on our um, youtube channel we have other videos the videos that we've done from habakkuk chapter one chapter 2 and now chapter 3 so you can see other videos and then so that you can have a full picture uh, i want you to send the video to your friends share it on your facebook page send it through your twitter account or your whatsapp and let's be a blessing together to someone until i come your way again for a fresh edition of the mirror of the world thank you very much for watching this video and have a wonderful day bye